Hey guys, Xboxer here, and today I'm going to show you a video of my new toy in the mail, which I'm sure you can recognize what it is. It is an OSP Tiger Claw 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. And I want to give a shout out to Neuralnar, who had done a very good, thorough, detailed analysis and testing of this unit. I credit him for convincing me to buy this unit and I'm going to go over a couple things that that he had said in his video but I'm going to specifically address the EMI and RFI concerns that some of the reviews uh, this unit had and I can tell you right off the bat that it is not something to be concerned about that can't be fixed with some simple power filtering I uh, wanted to go over my uh, setup real quick this is uh, some uh, zero gauge wire that I got from newconcepts.com and their high amperage uh, inline fuse. Now the inline fuse has three, uh, th no, I'm sorry, three mini ANL fuses, which they do that specifically to uh, help with the voltage drop uh, in the wire. And this wire, by the way, even though they say it's uh, zero gauge, it's more like double zero gauge. It is very thick um, and it's that's going to help you it's only going to help you for uh any type of search capability or going for a larger inverter uh the other thing that i added was a blue c uh m series uh, uh switch here it's rated at 300 amps continuous and it's got some ridiculously high surge capability it's like 1700 watts for like a minute and like five or 700 watts for like uh i'm sorry 500 or 700 amps uh, for like five minutes. It's built very tough, but I put that in there not just for convenience, but also also for safety. God forbid something happens to the inverter and don't want these batteries to explode. I can just easily turn it off. The batteries, I decided to go a little oversized because I like having, I like the idea of having some extra reserve time in the batteries. Right now it's running off uh, a two amp charge. I'm just keeping it like a trickle charge. It's my cheap manual battery charger from Schumacher. It's 20 bucks at Walmart. I know that I eventually will need to get a better capable charger that is multi-stage, uh, but eventually, uh, for right now, this is about all I got right now. And it, and it did the job. These, uh, batteries, they're group 31 dual purpose deep cycle batteries. Now, dual purpose marine batteries, it's kind of misleading. It just has higher cranking amps than a true quote unquote deep, uh, cycle battery would have. Um, the the reserve time is about 210 minutes per battery and about 105 amp hours a piece so i have 210 amp hours to play with here and uh, that for me is great especially when you're tailgating or camping you want to have some extra uh reserve and they are massively heavy i think each of them weigh about 60 pounds a piece but again, it is something that I was looking for. I could have went with the group 27. I decided to go with the group 31. And they are they they call them maintenance free, but they're really not. You, these caps you do want to check the electrolyte every now and then just to make sure that uh it's at the proper levels. This is not really in the it's kind of in a semi-permanent position right now until I'm through with my testing, but it eventually I would like to get um, a nut mounted on, on a piece of wood or uh, even a cart at this point, a small mini cart that has some uh, some caster wheels so I can roll it around, throw it in the back of my truck or something like that. And what I also got and I will eventually install permanently is the, I bought myself one of these digital voltmeters uh, that is monitoring the batteries right now. And as you can tell, it's 12.8 volts. It's about, they are fully charged. I had to charge each one individually. Uh, this charge is not really that capable. I do have them wired in parallel. And for those people that are trying to save a buck, this is, well, this is what happened to me. I went down to Home Depot and I bought their zero gauge cable. It's, I think the brand's like Southwire or South End. It's their zero gauge cable, but it has like 14 solid strands inside. It is insanely tough to bend these things and i only have them like this just to have it set up for right now i think eventually when i uh get the time and get some extra cash i will get some more of this uh, double zero cable and use it to go inside here because with it being so inflexible the way they are i can't put these uh tops on properly and 
well, that may not be too big of a deal. I liked having the ability to keep it closed off, and that's really the the safest way to do it, especially if you're going to have these in your house. Moving on to the EMI and RFI issues, what I wanted to address is st straight off the inverter. I am the, what I have as a t for a test here. I have a small powered speaker. It's a class AB design amplifier built in heavy transformer. Um, it's a hundred watts. It's got a horn and a 15 inch woofer. It's only about, again, it's only about a hundred watts. This is what is, I think what people are referring to on the EMI. Uh, the irradiated emissions uh, from this case is pretty bad. There is maybe about a three foot radius around the, the case itself where it, I had my bass guitar around my neck and before to, and I put my pickups right next to this. It, it's throwing off a lot of EMI and RFI. There's not really much you can do with that. Um, I did try grounding the case uh, to my ground rod. Outs I have an extra one outside my window here. And I did notice a difference. It did bring the EMI down where it wasn't as loud coming through the speakers. Unfortunately, it's not a foolproof uh, solution. It does help, but again, there's maybe about a three foot, maybe three and a half uh, bubble around this case where you don't want to have anything uh, that's susceptible or like not shielded from EMI RFI. It's just not. It, it it doesn't have it, it doesn't have that good a shielding in it, and that's I think that's the, one of the main reasons why this is this unit is so cheap. That uh, doesn't have any F, FCC uh, 15 ratings. Uh, nothing that I could find in the the very limited manual. Uh, nothing online. So I'm assuming that it doesn't have any type of certification of of the FCC 15 rules. So that's probably the reason why it doesn't have. Uh, it's not really commanding such a high price, but not to knock the inverter too much. It there are ways to to get around that. Uh, one of the things I will eventually do is uh, just for extra measure, you can put some ferrite chokes uh, or collars, if you will, on each of the DC lines here, and it, it, that will definitely help too. But as far as the AC line is concerned. Uh, some simple power conditioning will help you too. And what I'm going to show you, I'm going to first show you with the power conditioning and then, oh, I'm sorry, without the power conditioning, sorry, and with the power conditioning afterward. So without it, what you want to do, I have uh, for my test today, I have that powered speaker. It's directly uh, connected to the inverter. And I'm going to put the camera, turn this on. I'm going to put the camera in front of the horn. And you should hear some uh, EMI interference coming through. And now I turn the gain all the way up. Have a listen. It's not really too bad, but it is there. And I can only imagine for people that are running a ham shack, it's uh, only going to uh, get worse as you have much more equipment. Okay, now this is the test with some power conditioning applied to it. Now, you're probably wondering, and you've seen this before, um, this is a neutral to ground bonding jumper that I use in my, ge in my generator videos. Uh, since this is a pure sine wave inverter, this doesn't have a live neutral for, on the battery. So you are able to bond the neutral to ground, which means that you could... Uh, pretty much install it or connect it to a transfer switch. I'll do that in another video down the road. I haven't gotten the all the materials needed to do that. I would not recommend it, but it is possible, especially in a pinch. But again, it's not recommended. I don't want anyone to get hurt or anything like that. Um, but I will do a video to show how you are able to connect to a transfer switch. Another thing to mention too with the neutral ground bonding here is I'm going to turn on my Furman power conditioner. It's an M, what is it, an M8D. It's their entry level unit. It's only about $100. And I got the uh, voltage meter right in the front. So right now this is uh, running off the inverter. It uh, shows about 117 volts, which is what you should get. And 
the voltage regulation actually on, on this uh, unit has in, has gotten better since Neural Nard's video. I had put a 1500 watt heater load on this bef after I had gotten everything set up and what I saw was that the voltage wasn't sagging all the way down to 105 uh, in his video. It actually was staying around I want to say the lowest it got was about 114, 112 and most of the time, when it got to like about 800, 900 watts, the voltage actually went up. And I know he covered that in his video. Now, I'm not sure if the simple reason for that is because I have slightly thicker cables or I have bigger batteries. Either way, uh, the voltage regulation on this is not too bad at all. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my preamps. Uh, pretty much everything is set flat there. Um, just power everything up, my tuner, everything else here, the BBE. And don't hate on the BBE. I know some people think it's nothing more than a glorified EQ, but it actually does make you make your uh, sound better. Uh, I'm going to turn on the amplifier, which again, this is another heavy, heavy, I, I'll say that again, heavy amplifier. It's a class AB design, two heavy iron transformers in there, but again, built like an Abrams tank, can't kill it. Relay kicks on, the amp is running. And the voltage sagged a little bit to about 115, but it's not too bad. At, at idle, this is only pulling about two, maybe three amps. As you start to play with the, uh, play with the, the music, it, it starts to draw quite a bit of amperage. So what I'm gonna do, uh, the, every, all the rack units are outputted out into this wire which then goes to the input of the amplifier everything's flat and this test is going to be pretty subjective I don't really have uh, the right equipment to test the EMI RFI uh, like on an oscilloscope or anything like that but for a, in a pro audio situation you don't want to have any type of EMI or RFI coming through your amplifier because if it's just going to be buzzing all night a lot of people are just going to tell you shut it off or <laughs> don't play at all uh, but here it goes. This is just nothing is connected to the input of my preamp. And here is the main. You're going to hear hiss because that's the preamp uh, with the gain uh, in the gain stage here. But I wanted to do that because if you can hear any type of buzzing, let me know. Right in front of the horn. It's not too, too bad. But watch, if I, there is a little bit of buzz here. Now if I go and I remove the neutral ground bonding jumper, it changes the sound. It actually reduces it somewhat, but it is still there. It's still not that bad at all where you're not gonna really hear the, the interference when you're playing live. So that's going to conclude my video for right now. Uh, eventually I will make another video showing how to connect this up as in the safest way possible to a transfer switch. Uh, but as you could tell, the EMI and the RFI issues can be negated uh, by using some good quality power conditioning. Uh, any, uh, any type of ferrite chokes or, or ring collars, you could put them around the, the AC line if you really wanted to, and the DC line is probably for good measure. But for a $200 unit, or less than that actually it's actually done it's actually a very good setup and with the right um and with the right setup of the your wires having a decent sized battery bank i i i would highly recommend this especially if you're on a budget again i don't go tailgating every single weekend but this is great to have to run some lights tv uh if you're if you're watching a game or something like that, it, it really does uh, fit my needs very, very, very good. Again, want to give a shout out to Neuralnar for uh, really uh, convincing me that this was a good unit to buy. And if there's any other uh, YouTuber out there, uh, if you're if there's any specific test that you want me to do, uh, whether you want me to connect something up a certain way. Uh, I'm open for suggestions. This is some new territory for me. This is my first inverter to, that I've ever owned. So I'm taking it one step at a time. And if there's any specific tests, especially if you're wanting to know what the capabilities are of it, uh, other than what wasn't covered in Neural Nars video, I'd be more than happy to try to accommodate it. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. Again, it's something that uh, 
it was worth the, I think it was worth the money and time will tell on how the reliability goes. The only other thing that I know that tends to go that tends to wear out a little bit quicker than expected and this is maybe not the fault of of the Tiger Claw but just in, inverters in general is the uh, exhaust fans. The exhaust fans are probably some no name brand that I've ne never even heard of and it uses uh pulse width modulation in order to uh, adjust the speed of the fans, and these are obviously temperature controlled. Uh, eventually, that does uh, cause wear and tear on the bearings and on the windings that uh, the motors have, so I would imagine that they probably won't last as long, but again, this is something that can be easily replaced. Remove the four screws, resolder the wires in, you're good to go. I haven't taken this thing apart yet, but I will eventually just to take a peek inside, and if there's anything to adjust, and you know, just kind of poke around and see uh, for my own curiosity. Thanks guys. And if, again, if there's any questions, please feel free to message me, subscribe and, uh, have a great one.